So I'm here with Chris Patterson in his garage and he's just going to run through what it is currently he has um, for his um, joy and pleasure of today. Yeah, I was just telling John that um, uh, all of my vehicles coincidentally have V8s from um, my old Land Rover Defender 1992 110 V8, uh, 2002 Jaguar S-Type V8 and then what is clearly this which is the um, Morgan Plus 8 uh, 1969 and uh, what I'm pleased to say about uh, even when I, with all my V8 engine cars and I even had V-twin motorcycles i.e. a Buell and a Harley Davidson but even my compressor which sits behind John is an old Bristol V-twin so uh, yeah quite addicted to the V-shape in engines that's quite a good thing so how this thing arose was um, uh, even when I was racing the Grim Reaper um, over the last um, uh, what, 15 years ago is when I first started building it. But there was a point during that time when it lived in the lock-up garage just down the road. So this space was empty. And um, at that time, my then um, American girlfriend, um, she wanted to buy a Morgan. And um, I said, well, I know somebody who's got one. And it's been sitting around for donkey's years, even though he's had it almost from you. And that was a 1965 um, Series 5. Morgan competition, so it had the pre-cross flow Cortina GT engine. Um, my friend had um, re-chassied it, um, done a lot of the bodywork, rewired it, rebuilt the engine, but couldn't get it to run. And um, so I said to Julia, "Well, this car's available." They came to an agreement on price, and uh, so I re rebuilt the engine here in this garage because. Um, uh, she was a bit dismayed, you know, fun to hear the engine didn't wasn't running. Said, "Hey, that is the the least of car problems, not a problem at all. Bodywork's done, wiring's done, rebuild an engine, no problem at all." And you know, got it running and fine. And she used that. And we went to lots of uh, Morgan-oriented events um, all around the country, and uh, they were a thoroughly enjoyable bunch of people. And we went to the Bentley Drivers Club meeting at Silverstone one year. Um, so this is probably about five or six years ago and um, there was an old boy, I say old, who am I to call anybody old? I'm 74 but the gentleman that was selling this was in his 80s and um, I heard from somebody at the track that he was thinking of selling it approached him and he said uh, well yes have a go in it so um, I gave it a bit of a blast around the Silverstone pits and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it and bought it off him and had a lot of fun out of it since. Whilst we shut down over Covid, um, I went through it um, like British motorcycles, they tend to shake themselves to death and I think every single fastener was loose. Um, rebuilt the front suspension, and put in remote greasing lines and yeah, all sorts of other things. What I'm currently involved with is um, making a new dashboard for it because the original dashboard had um, cheap white-faced instruments in it in a very blonde wooden dashboard itself and uh, when this car had been rebuilt in the 90s um, they'd done the best of everything uh, including a brand new 4 litre Rover engine straight from uh, Land Rover new gearbox, new everything Chris, but, oh sorry it fumed horribly and I don't know how the previous owner put up with it so um, I had this massive catch tank built um, and with a PCV valve it's, that's taken all that away but um, considering being driven to Le Mans three times and various other long distances so I don't know how he put up with the amount of fuming that came into the cockpit anyway that's all gone away I don't particularly like the blue silicon hoses I'd like to replace them with black in the front too many of them <laughs> That's a job for another time. So this is the Mark II dashboard underway, which is using the original, uh, the white-faced instruments. And what in interests me is that when um, the Morgan specialists who rebuilt the car initially used the best of everything throughout, built to a very high standard, and then got, I think, probably the cheapest looking instruments out of um, some catalogue or other. But um, they did the job for a while. But I'm going to go beyond that now. I've actually got a lovely wooden dashboard um, because I want to make it look like an old car. And so it'll have the 
um, instruments all grouped in the centre in um, the black, probably crackle finish panel um, in the way that uh, Morgan's up to the 1960s did the plus fours and that'll make it a lot nicer I think. But it goes like the clappers and it's very amusing to drive and um, handles really well. I wish they do. There's an enormous amount of fun to be had out of them. It's been sprinted and hill climbed. Just one's well, got this uh, lovely roll cage. Uh, the padding on here is surplus from uh, left over from the Grim Reaper. That's about the size of it. I need to get it back on the road quickly. <laughs> Crack on. sold all that off now and um, the only thing I'm left with uh, Chevy wise apart from some original 60s Cal Custom rocker covers which are rather nice is a set of um, steel rods which have been sized, stress relieved, straightened um, and everything apart from balance so uh, I've got some um, oh, I've got my Model A Ford axle up there and um, some front two sets of spindles for it as well and so there's some other interesting bits and pieces but I have been getting rid of a lot of stuff recently simply because when I go I don't want my daughters to have to deal with it <laughs> 